Okay, now I need to turn something in by the end of this 15 minute demo. So now it's crunch time. How do we solidify it? Well, the first thing I'm gonna do is find what my composition is. I'm gonna use my guides. And I'm gonna find the edges of what I wanna keep. Cause that's all I need to worry about cleaning up. And now I'm gonna go from the background on forward. That's good, that's at 100%. What's on top of that? That's looking pretty good. Those seams blend pretty well. I'm not sure about this planet here, but it's okay, I can adjust that at the end if I need to. The layer in front, how does that transition? It's okay so far. So the one that needs my immediate attention is this one. So I zoom in, scroll up to there, and then how can I erase this edge? What I can do is I can use the magic wand and select with contiguous, kind of all that misty cloud. And then instead of just hitting delete, which will make it kind of very sharp, like so, which isn't terrible. What I can do is I can use that selection and then I can use my eraser. And what that selection does is it makes it so I can only erase in that selected area. So I'm not gonna accidentally soften my, my clouds. And then I can take my opacity down on my soft eraser and I can give it just a slight mist on top, but not something so uniform and distracting as what was there. Whoa, what did I do? I switched to the brush tool somehow. Let's see. So I'm just erasing. I'm doing it at about 63% opacity. And sometimes that mist is really helpful at transitioning it. In fact, here, I think I might take my opacity down less. I, that's similar to what I did on that side of the mountain. It's working pretty well. So again, I'm using the magic wand, selecting the empty space, or not the empty space, but that, that rim. Because even if it's a really low opacity mist, the, the magic wand's gonna grab it all. And then it keeps my uh, mountain safe. I can get some of that natural variety to it. I'll do that here. Now that I've done the color adjustments, you know, everything's looking pretty good. So it's just fine tuning some of these sight lines. You can really see the different layers of mountains. Okay. Still think it's a little heavy right here. Okay. 
Always good to see it from a distance as well. I might use that same technique on the mountain range behind. And hit that a little bit with my low opacity eraser. Little adjustments, really nice to have the stylus. I don't have to zoom in so much to get kind of fine, fine marks. I think I'm liking that star right above the mountain ridge. It's a little bizarre, but it works. Okay, the next coming forward, is there anything I wanna dodge and burn? These tool adjustments. Maybe deepen this shadow here a little bit. Especially as the ice turns to mountain ridge. Play with how I shade it. You can use the sponge to desaturate this blue in the background. So it looks more like the mountain, less like it was just copied from a chunk of ice. That's good. I want to darken with the burn tool. this ravine a little, because it's looking a little purple. It's a mystery hole. Yeah, that looks good. Now, the water, that works. Is there anything I want to dodge and burn there? No, it's fine. Remember, I, because I did it as a duplicate, I could always, oh, wrong one. I can always play with its opacity as well. Get a little bit of that reflection in there. Still not losing the color. Desaturate the blue here. Up, oh, I'm burning instead of desaturating. Whoops. Change to the sponge tool. I think I'm on the wrong layer though. Yeah, so just by practicing a lot, by doing it, you'll get used to layer organization, knowing that you're affecting what you actually want to affect. Just getting rid of some of that bright, bright color. All right, next is this big chunk of ice and its messy edge. So now what I can do, because I already deleted it sharply with the magic wand, I can do little games like this. I can select the empty space around it with the magic wand. Not sure why it's not showing. Let's see. Come on. Show my selection. Huh. I must have a selection pending. So I wish there was a faster way for this. What I can try to do is use the magic wand 
very selectively just clicking on this dark blue. I could do select color range, but that would, well, yeah, I can show you that. It, it can be a little dicey. Like you see, it will just leave certain spots. But sometimes the easiest is just to go directly with your lasso, have a little bit of feather in it, and just don't be afraid to cut into your organic materials. If this was a man-made object like a skyscraper, I might use the polygonal lasso to, to find hard edges. But that does a nice job. Because it's feathered, it erases softly and with a slightly low opacity, but if I click to delete twice, it will erase more of it. So you get some nice variety there. That's a little labor intensive. I could also just go in with my eraser at 100% soft and targeted. But I'm zoomed in at 400% right now. And so that's a little bit of overkill in terms of what's needed for a good print and what detail you're going to notice. So when you can see the pixels on the screen, remember we're printing at a high enough resolution that the human eye is not going to be able to see these individual pixels. You can go between your eraser and your lasso, and you just get lots of practice making selections. Something I haven't mentioned in the videos, I don't think, though I've helped some individuals with it, is that once you have a selection, you can add to it and you can subtract to it. So let's say I've done a chunk here. I want to add to it before I make a new selection. So I hold down shift and you'll see a little plus sign gets added next to my lasso. And you can use this with any selection tool. Then I can do another chunk while I'm holding down shift and it will add it to my original selection. That's actually what these settings are for too. I can actually just set it on additive mode, but I kind of prefer just using the shift Because the hardest thing about tools is that you want them to always work predictably. And sometimes when I mess with the settings, I don't remember the settings the next time I use them. So I augment them with, with hotkeys like shift. And then if you hold down option, so let's say, whoops, I accidentally selected too much. And if I delete now, I'll lose that glacier. So instead I hold down option and I can subtract away from what I selected. So it's just what I want. And then I can add, hold down shift to add to it again. Now I first took a Photoshop back in 1996. It was, we were using Photoshop 4. This was before Creative Cloud. And it was not able to do all this. But back in those days, my teacher just said, being good at Photoshop means good at making selections. It's all about just how you play with pixels. That's what Photoshop is meant to do. It helps you adjust pixels. So you have to be able to know how to select them in order to play with them and make them do what you want. 